All right, what I'd like to do in this video is look at the reaction mechanism behind the conversion of acetone here into this alcohol, converting acetone into an alcohol. Acetone, of course, being a carbonyl um, functional group containing molecule, and then, of course, the conversion to an alcohol involving the protonation of the oxygen and the carbonyl here into an OH group. And, of course, we would have to lose a pi bond in order to make that happen. So what is the reaction mechanism for a conversion from acetone into an alcohol when we are using a Grignard reagent. In this case, I've chosen ethyl magnesium bromide. So magnesium bromide here, and then this ethyl group, CH3CH2, attached to that. And of course, in the second step, we use water. We're not using that in the first step because, of course, that would interfere with our Grignard reagent. So this is going to be a, a Grignard reaction. <coughs> and what happens? What goes on? Well, let's go ahead and start looking at the beginning of the mechanism. And uh, we'll talk about why certain things happen in the way that they do. So we have here, we have our Grignard reagent, of course. Now let's just do a quick review. A Grignard reagent is going to be some type of R group. Let's see if I can write better there. Some kind of R group attached to magnesium with your choice of halide, your choice. So in this case, we're using bromide. So, <clears throat> or bromine rather. Okay. So here we go. What we need to do is we need to, if you remember, tack on this R group, because we saw that here. We need to tack that on to this carbon, and we need to protonate this oxygen so that we get an OH, and we need to get rid of this pi bond and turn it into just a sigma bond there. So how can we do that? Well, let's look at uh, how this molecule works. So because we have an oxygen here, let's go ahead and draw in our electrons on this oxygen. Let's draw on the electrons that we have, our lone pair. Okay, so we have two lone pairs there on that oxygen. We have no lone pairs on the carbon. Well, the oxygen and carbon are neutral in charge here, but there's a slight positive and negative charge because this oxygen is so electronegative, it's going to make this end of the molecule be slightly negative. It's going to make the end that contains the carbon in this carbonyl be slightly positive, okay? Make that positive a little better. Now let's just make the whole thing a little better. Okay, so this is slightly positive. So when we have this molecule over here, let's break this down into two pieces. This side is going to end up being slightly positive, and this side is going to end up being slightly negative. So what that means is that this ethyl group, let's change colors here, is going to attack this carbon, okay, in the middle, because we have partial negative charge, partial positive charge. And when it does that, now we have five bonds to carbon now, so that's not okay. So we need to move one of these pairs of electrons from the pi bond up onto the oxygen, and we'll create another lone pair up there. So how will this proceed? How will this reaction look? Well, change color ink here. What we will end up with is, well, we'll have our initial, this methyl group is still here, this carbon is still here, this methyl group is still here. But look, on the bottom of the carbon, we've attached the ethyl group, so we just have the R group attached because that's what Grignard reagents do. They're just going to, the magnesium and the bromine or the uh, 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 whatever, whatever halogen you're using, um, yeah, yeah, like uh, chlorine or something. Like, sorry, Mom, I went blank there for a second. So uh, in, in, whatever your halogen, none of those are going to be involved. None of those are going to be involved in attaching to your molecule uh, that, you're, that you're dealing with. You're only going to have the R group attached. And so in this case, the R group is attached. So we just have the perfectly conserved ethyl group, CH2, CH3, okay, attached to the central carbon. And of course, now since we moved one of these pi, sets of pi electrons up here, we just have a sigma bond now between the carbon and the oxygen. And the oxygen, let's draw this in a different color here, it's going to have three lone pairs of electrons, okay, and which is going to give it a negative charge. So now longer, it's no longer partial negative, partial positive, it is Neutral and negative, okay? So this carbon is neutral. This, there's, no, you know, there's no reason for this carbon to be attacked at this point. And so we're going to now proceed to step two in the mechanism. And step two is going to involve water. So now we're going to add, okay, if I can draw these electrons appropriately. All right, so now we've added water. <clears throat> 
to the mix. What's going to happen here? Well, we have a hydrogen here, which is going to be very much drawn. This is going to be very much electrophilic, and this oxygen with negative charge is going to be super nucleophilic now. And so it's going to attack this hydrogen. Well, when it does that, these electrons are going to jump onto the oxygen here, which is going to create what? It's going to create an OH group, negative. Okay. So we're going to end up with, on our next page, we're going to have plus OH minus added to whatever our, um, whatever our final product is. And so what's our final product going to be? Well, look at what we did. We took this hydrogen onto this oxygen, so that means that we protonated that. So let's, let's rewrite that. We're going to have an OH group here. And that was connected to just this carbon, which had the two conserved methyl groups from the first bit of the reaction. So we have this carbon. We have, well, I'll, I'll write out CH3 now this time. CH3, okay. And now our ethyl group is still going to be on the bottom because that didn't change. Nothing in the mechanism uh, caused that to change at this point. We just protonated the oxygen. CH2, CH3. So we have our methyl group there. And so now we have OH group on the top. We've protonated that. And so now we're at the molecule we wanted to get to originally. Let's go back to our first page. We have taken acetone. We have gotten rid of the pi bond. We've turned it into a sigma bond. We have protonated the oxygen involved in the carbonyl. So now we have an OH group. And we have successfully to this portion of this central carbon, we've added the ethyl group. And so we did that via the Grignard reagent. The magnesium and the bromine have nothing to do with this anymore. They're gone. They're in solution. They don't matter. And we just have the ethyl group added on. And now in our final molecule, because we have protonated the oxygen, it no longer has a negative charge as it did in this stage. We have a central carbon attached to two methyls, one ethyl and one OH, which is going to give us our tertiary alcohol. And that's it. Simple as that.